Hi everybody, uh, this is Tuan and I'm going to be doing a simple tutorial on simple animations um, in After Effects and how you can export and import from uh, Adobe Premiere. And I want to talk to you guys about um, some of the simple expressions that you can use in After Effects that could lead to um, your vision of what uh, your video can do in terms of simple animations. Um, so the first expression I'm, I'm going to talk about is scale. And what scale really is about is, you know, you have, let's say, a box as your main shape. Um, and the animation from one point to the other is basically you are making that shape larger. So in size, that's one way of uh, creating scale. Um, and there are certain different methods of scale in the animation world where if you um, create something that is larger, let's say this is your uh, frame that you're going to use for your video. If you have something larger on your screen, usually what it means is it's either closer uh, dependent on an object. So let's say you know you have a pencil here. Um, and you have this large object which is right here and then you have a smaller object here. Visually this looks like this is behind the larger object. So this is very simple mechanics that you can use to your advantage um, while dealing with scale. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, uh, simple is opacity. Opacity. And what opacity is, is let's say this is your cube. And it's just completely darkened out. What it is, um, in Adobe terms, is you're basically creating something that is see through or that something that might disappear. So it's either lighter where you can see something behind it. So there's some sort of transparency there. Um, in Photoshop, we use opacity um, a lot in terms of overlaying and uh, different techniques. Um, and what I usually see is if you want to play with opacity, you know, you can even have certain text that appears and then, you know, disappears so when you have the opacity what the animation is it's basically going to erase that blank spot that was there before uh, the next one um, that I use mainly is number three is position and basically what position is it's motion on a 2D scale. So, uh, you know, you move from one coordinate, you know, let's say X, Y to, you know, X1, Y1. Could be another coordinate. But with this, you know, on top of uh, the other um, elements that you can use, movement is a great subtle detail of uh, a flow that you want to have throughout your video. Um, and the fourth element that I usually use uh, is rotation. So you have a square and you have a certain object there. You want this to rotate. So you have it here. So these are the four main um, uh, the four main uh, elements that I use in After Effects. So when I'm dealing with
So basically, you know, you make your storyboard. From one frame to the other, let's say it is, uh, you know, a circle or a, a sphere, and you want the sphere to move in this direction and curve it up this direction, but make this larger and darker. Then you know you have these certain steps. As you know, one you think about the position from the beginning. This one, and then where is that transition from one to the other? Position two. So you're thinking about you know the four things that we were talking about: is scale, opacity. If it is fading in or out, opacity. Uh, position. And then if you are going to rotate it or not. And, you know, you, you, we're talking about simple objects here, but you can translate that into text, you know, your illustration. So your text illustration uh, or any other object that you want to animate. So, you know, you think about a bouncing ball, which is pretty much a common um, thing to animate. You have the ground plane, you have the ball that begins here, ball that begins there, the second frame. So, frame one, two, three, four. The ball at its highest peak. And then, you know, so it goes from up, up, the highest peak, and it falls back down. So you have this simple animation, but all these four elements are basically the key drivers that you want to include in each frame. So I'm going to open up After Effects and show you um, the user interface and what you can simply do uh, with objects that you might make. So I'm going to use the uh, ellipse tool and I'm going to basically try to animate a ball bouncing up and down, which is going to be, let's see, we'll do a line here, let's make that five, so we have our ground plane that we're going to be using, and then uh, clicking on the sphere, fill, let's make the you know, arbitrary color, and Now we have two, uh, we have our line, which is shape layer one, and then we have shape layer two as the ball. So what you can see here is uh, similar in Photoshop, you have this transform. And here are all your elements that you can uh, work with. And here you have a timeline uh, of what the animation time is going to be. And you can set this um, before you do uh, the, uh, the, the, the file. So I have all my key elements here. Um, and basically what you want to do is you have these uh, time watches that are next to your uh, your elements that you can use in the animation. So let's say in the beginning, uh, I want this ball to be uh, semi-translucent. So I hit the timer and I drop it down to uh, zero. I move the frame 
out a few and I basically move it to 100. So what now you can see is an animation between the opacity, which is not there, versus if I play it, it's there. So that's very simple. And the keyframes, you can actually move the slider around. So it depends on how fast you want it to appear and so forth. So let's say I want it to appear at this frame here. And again, positioning, let's say I want this position to basically move. And you can change this however you want but that's one keyframe at the beginning and let's say you want to move the ball up to its highest point and then back down to its lowest point so now you have three frames where you can basically trigger them however you want so I'm gonna play it right now basically up and down and what you can do is, on top of moving it up and down, you can basically change the scale, which we talked about in uh, previous um, in Photoshop, where you know you have, let's say, this ball is going to be uh, smaller. Let's move this down just a tad bit, and then once it gets up to, let's say, at this point, the highest point, it's going to be a little bit bigger or a little bit bigger with scale. And then once it gets down to the ground, let's make it tremendously larger. So what you have now is if you go back, press play, and it looks like it's going towards you. So just little, you have to basically, you know, pick what you want to do with the object and it can be as complex and as uh, simple as you want it to be. Um, but Playing with these elements is a very it's it's a large scale where you can do anything you want, um, and it's just your mind of seeing things that are out there now. You know, let's say if you there's a transitioning uh, of this ball that you know you want to make it larger than the the screen. This, let's say you scale it goes out towards the screen. So far that you know it's that that it's larger than the screen. So you go back and press play goes out in so it's definitely on your um, if you go back to the Photoshop file it is up to you what you put down first on your timeline you know you have these one two three four keyframes that you want to commit to and if you can have the vision of what it is in the form of storytelling and storyboards um, your animations will be better.